Alright, so if you guys have listened to that piece, it might ring some bells because it's such a famous piece and it's been used in a lot of TV shows, a lot of commercials, a lot of movies and even some of your favourite cartoons. Now we get into when Edward Grieg was hired by another Norwegian guy. His name was Henrik Ibsen and he was hired to write the music for a particular piece of music a particular play, a very famous one, called Pier Hunt. So this G, it's not pronounced giant or junt, it's pronounced Pier Hunt. One thing we really need to pay attention to is the fact that Edvard Grieg, he was in Europe, because Norway is in Europe, and Europe had a huge multitude of very high profile composers, mainly in Vienna, which is in Austria, mainly in Paris, which is in France, and during the Romantic era. However, in Norway, there wasn't really much of any other composer, it was just Edvard Grieg, so he was absolutely adored by the people of Norway. You could look at it like it was a big fish in a small pond, and what that means is, he had, ev there was not really much competition for him. So it's picture like a swordfish or a big tuna, tuna is not a small fish, it's very big. And just imagine it in a small pond in a restaurant somewhere, amidst all these small anchovies, and goldfish and clownfish like Finding Nemo. You can't help but notice it because it's such a big fish. So he was a big fish in a small pond. A big composer, the small pond being Norway. Pierre Hunt is a story about the son of a successful man who becomes a drunkard and leaves him, him being Pierre, and his mom penniless. They have no money whatsoever. So he decides to set out to make his life better, but unfortunately his poor judgment leads to bad decisions which leads him to getting into a bit of trouble. Make good decisions, people. He meets and falls in love with a beautiful Norwegian girl called Solvig. And yes, Solvig is a girl's name, S-O-L-V-E-I-G. But once again, bad judgment causes him to fall in love with her and inevitably leave her. He goes on a series of fantasy adventures and one of them lands him into the Troll King's Mountain Hall. And that's when the music comes in, in the Hall of the Mountain King. One thing I've just forgotten to mention. So, in a, the midst of all these plays, as one scene is moving to the other, if you guys recall when we looked at Mendelssohn's Wedding March, they would have music between the scenes. And so, that was called incidental music. So here comes this piece of incidental music in the Hall of the Mountain King where we find our protagonist and our lead character, Pierre Hunt, tiptoeing through the Hall of the Mountain King and what is going to happen. Listen to piece two within your music playlist and I'll see you there in part two.